the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to this edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here each and every single week. You know, it's been a really, really fun year, a fun season here on Double Tap TV, season three, if you're counting, guys. Uh, I am Mark Aflalo. Alongside me, let's bring him on, Stephen Scott. Thank you for being here each and every single week. We've got a really fun show lined up for you guys this week. And, and each and every single week, you guys send in a lot of questions. We answer some on the on the audio show. We answer some here, but there's so many questions that we didn't get to, Stephen. So this week, we figured let's bring on some of our regulars from the season. And let's try to get to some of these questions and get them all out of the way so we can all get on with our summer. How do you feel about that? I'm all for it. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to answering some questions with our guests. So let's bring on the co-host of Double Tap Canada, heard every single Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on AMI-audio, Sean Priest. Welcome to the program. Thank you for being here once again. Ah, oh, thanks, Mark. Always great to be here. And Mitchell Whitfield, another regular contributor to this program. He is the co-host of Your Tech Report, heard every single week on Sirius XM. Mitchell, thank you for being here. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. It's It's been a little while. I... I can't wait to get started, but I, I'm a little nervous. I want to make sure people know these questions we have never heard before. Nope. So our answers are going to be completely spontaneous to these questions, and I look forward to giving a completely spontaneously bad answer. They are all spontaneous, and they are unscreened, <laughs> and uh, not only that, but they are all personal and extremely private in nature, guys. Let's do this. Let, let's start with the hardest one here, okay, guys? What is the best smart speaker for outdoor listening? Ooh, Mitchell, I'm going to let you start with this one because that's a really personal question. Uh, it is a very personal question, but it kind of feeds into something that I received as a gift recently, and that would be the Sonos Move. I've known about the Sonos ecosystem for a very long time. I uh, started listening to it early on, and I feel that when Sonos first started, it was more about connecting your home's audio and less about the audio quality. Uh, but I think that kind of changes with the Sonos Move because the sound quality is actually spectacular. The build is solid, uh, sound is good, deep bass, rich mids, high highs, uh, very clear. Uh, and I was fairly impressed with how easy it was to use and how to connect to your entire home audio system because, of course, it has A-L-E-X-A -E built in. I don't want to say it out loud because it'll set off all of our homes. Uh, but it really is kind of the perfect solution for bringing audio into your home, out into the backyard, anywhere you want, really. And you're not compromising as you used to in the past uh, to get the connectivity and getting bad sound. Now the sound is actually fantastic. So um, if I had to say my favorite right now, it would be the Sonos Move. Even though a little bit on the expensive side, guys, it's not cheap, but if you have the money for it, it really is wonderful. Well, you just yeah, picked up on uh, my favorite one, so I'm going to have to give that a second vote. Sean, you got a selection for an outdoor speaker? Yes, and it's an easy one for me, and it's uh, an answer that I give to a lot of things. Get the cheapest one you can get. <laughs> because, <laughs> yes, because, um, look, for me, it doesn't matter because I, I, I tend to leave these things behind. I'll leave it or lose it on the beach or on a campsite. Um, so... I want something that I don't care if I'm going to lose. Yes, Sonos have some great options. You have Ultimate Ear, uh, the Boom series, you know, Wonder Boom, Mega Booms, um, JBL. Um, there's Anchor have a, a, a good outdoor one as well. And look, these are all great options. And if you have a, a backyard or a, a space, an outside area that you really want to fill with music, then yes, go with one of those. But if, some, if it's something you just want to throw in your backpack and take with you, while you're doing a barbecue or whatever it may be, then I would say as long as it's waterproof, as long as it's obviously battery powered, then um, yeah, go with anything really. Um, the whole thing for, with me and outdoor tech is that I'm gonna lose it. So go with the cheapest one you can find. Steven, got anything to add or are you just gonna go with our decisions? No, I, I can add to that. And I will also add to, the, to Sean's comments and say, uh, don't listen to a word that Sean Priest says on this topic because he has got no standards when it comes to, well, anything, frankly, but certainly sound quality for sure. Um, no, for me, I would certainly go with the Sonos Move. I haven't heard the Sonos Move, so I agree with you. I totally agree with you on it. The one I have heard, though, which I think is brilliant from the same line, is the Sonos Roam speaker. Now, this is R-O-A-M, 
uh, it is uh, even more portable than the Move. And I, this is ideally for, you know, going away for the day or perhaps, you know, chucking into the back of the car or, you know, into the backpack and, and going off camping or, you know, whatever it is you're doing outside. And it gives you access to the Sonos sound on, on the Move, essentially, outside. But it's ideal, again, for those barbecues, those days in the, the, the garden, whatever you might be doing. Uh, I'd also, you know, give a nod to the Bose SoundLink Mini which is actually a fantastic little speaker. Again, waterproof, uh, very small, you know, palm of the hand size. Uh, it's not a, a big speaker at all. What I love about it is you can, if you buy two of them, you can stereo pair them. Uh, so you can just stick them onto the garden fence and suddenly you've got stereo sound in your garden uh, whatever distance apart you wish to, to put them. So really nice speakers and all coming in that sort of $200 mark. Okay, let's go some rapid you know, fire. Mark, I just, want to, I just want to jump in a second because... I, uh, you know, Steve made a really good point, and I and I wanted to make I, I wanted to make sure that people understood that in terms of portable speaker, the Sonos Move is really meant to be portable from your living room to the bedroom to the yard. It's a little bit heavy to be your take along speaker if you wanted to go along with Sean and take your speaker into the woods for a picnic or whatever you're going to do. Uh, it is a little heavy to transport around, so it's not really portable in terms of throwing in your backpack, but it is portable in terms of moving around your home. We're talking all about your questions throughout the season here on Double Tap TV. We are joined by, of course, Stephen Scott. Sean Priest is here as well as Mitchell Whitfield. Guys, I'm going to go some rapid fire here because I, I don't want to spend too much time on everything because we've got lots of questions I want to get to. So just in, in one or two words, uh, tell me, what are your favorite headphones? Mitchell, go. Oh, wow. Uh, boy, oh boy. Okay. Uh, Bose Noise Cancelling Quiet Comfort 2 headphones. Sean Priest. Oh, easy one. The Echo Buds. I love having the uh, Lady A voice assistant in my head. Perfect. Steven Scott? AirPods Max. Oh, of course he has to go with the Apple. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the <laughs> I'm gonna go with the JBL, uh, the JBL I don't even remember the model, the what are they, the Elite? No, the Jabra Elite, the eighty five Ts. They are phenomenal. I love the sound quality. That's a fantastic the, yeah, the, yeah. They're, it's a brilliant. Yeah, they're quite fin quite phenomenal there. Um so we did a, a couple episodes ago, we did a show on dual screen devices. We obviously have, you know, this the Surface Duo and of course other Samsung devices. And uh, we had a question here from James Van Ghent who asks, What kind of protection of casing should I use for these dual screen devices and how bulky will they get with a case and last one what happens if one of the screens cracks and, and the other one doesn't Stephen uh, well you're screwed I think is the bottom line um, <laughs> yeah I, I think the best advice I can give is don't drop it don't break it uh, buy a case uh, and you know in terms of cases I, I've always used Spigen S-P-I-G-E-N I'm not even sure if it is the way you pronounce it but I've always used them for cases I think they're always very good um, uh, cases. I don't know if they do them for the Surface Duos or anything, but uh, that would be my option. Surface Duo actually comes with a little bumper that goes around it, but I must tell you from experience, this is not one of those devices you want to drop on the ground because if you do damage it, it's going to be hard to find somewhere to go get that repaired. It's a really, really thin device, and the repairability on this is 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 not terribly good. Uh, let's take a quick break, guys. Uh, we're at Double Tap TV. We're talking all about your questions. You ask us stuff all year long. Again, if you want to email us now, it's feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we were at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag AskDoubleTap. And of course, on Instagram, we were at DoubleTap.online. Let's get back in a moment. We're going to talk all about smart security and doorbells. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here along for the ride. I am joined this week by my co-host, Stephen Scott. Hi, Stephen. Sean Priest, the co-host of Double Tap Canada, heard every single Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on AMI-audio. And Mitchell Whitfield, the co-host of Your Tech Report, heard each week on Sirius XM. Gentlemen, the next question up for today. Can smart tech help me keep fit? Ooh, I am definitely not the right person to answer that question. I'm going to go to the lightest person on screen now, Mitchell Whitfield. You know, yeah, I think technology, especially smart tech, smart technology, can inspire you. What I mean by that is, you know, I don't mean, of course, like it's coming down from the heavens and changing your perception of the world. Yeah, exactly. Like the clouds opening this beam of inspiration. Even if advice like the Apple Watch, and I'm going to use the Apple Watch. I know Steven's a fan. I know there are a lot of people out there that love their Apple Watch. Having that on your wrist every day, 
and the complications that are on there, whatever complications you have, simple stuff like your steps, for example. Just being able to look down at that watch every day and see how many steps you took and say, huh, it took 8,000 steps today. Maybe I'll take a little more tomorrow. I mean, even that simple interaction of noticing, being aware of your body, what you do with it, how many steps you've taken, that is a simple organic inspiration to maybe check it again the next day. Maybe you're tracking your sleep. Maybe you're tracking your diet, what you've eaten, how often you eat. These are all ways that organically, and again, I use the word organically because it's it's something that, you know, you, it's not like going to the, I have to go to the gym today. Oh, I really hate going to the gym. It's something that's already on your wrist. You're noticing it when you, you know, bring up your wrist here to look at the time. So you're noticing things organically that tend to stick, you know, and just having that every day in your head. How many steps have I taken? Maybe I'll take more tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll be more aware of my sleeping patterns. I have to take a little rest. My heart is telling me, you know, it's being a little fast. I need to settle down a little bit. So all these little cues that come from different things on, on a simple device like an Apple Watch, making you aware of your heart rate, your food intake, your exercise, all in a way that is not forced upon you, but is already a part of an action that you do. I think that can inspire you to be better throughout the year. Jason reached out on Twitter asking us, recommend the most portable computer for being back on the move. Steven? Oh, well, I mean, MacBook Air or Dell XPS done okay sean wow that was to the point Stephen. um yeah uh there's so many choices when it comes to uh, truly amazingly portable laptops now on both mac and um <clears throat> excuse me windows um so yeah i i would argue though that it may be a better investment to get a really portable small bluetooth keyboard and use your smartphone depending on your use case but for me there's uh, there's a lot I can do on my smartphone. You know, I could have sworn someone was going to say another answer, but I'll let Mitchell answer first. Mitchell, what do you think? No, no, I, I was actually going to say your smartphone because it's in your pocket and it really is a computer in your pocket. So an you know, iPad, computer, and it's also, you know, as expensive as many computers are out there. So that would be my first option. Um, but if I had to pick an actual computer that you could work all of, use all of your software on, I would have to say the MacBook Air M1. Uh, best bang for your buck in computing. They've increased the RAM, increased the processor speed. They've increased the storage, decreased the price. It's kind of the perfect storm. So M1 MacBook Air. With the caveat of uh, obviously it depends on what you use a computer for. I would argue that the uh, brand new iPad with the M1 chip is as good as any computer you're going to get out there and is super portable. And I will not let Sean Priest argue with me on that one. Uh, another question here comes from Emily. <laughs> what apps are best for walking or transit routes? Uh, walking um i haven't done that in a while um yeah i think yeah well i mean I, I think you know certainly apps i use and i have been using more and more are apple maps and google maps and there are lots of apps out there that can help uh, especially around accessibility there are tons of different apps you can use like blind square or you know many many others i'm sure but the point is that i think what you want is is clear and concise and precise data and you're going to get that from, from the top two, in my view, which is the Apple Maps, the Google Maps, which do have all the fantastic features in them, including transit help as well. So, you know, just, you know, not just the walking route, but, you know, if you're walking to get a bus, when you're on the bus, you'll get information on how to get off the bus and where, and then continue your journey walking or otherwise from there, even if you need to grab an Uber or a Lyft from there, you can do that. So, yeah, I would say those are my two favorite go-to apps for navigation. Anybody have an alternate? Uh, no, not really, Mark. No. Okay, well, let's <laughs> we'll move say, on. Look, I need a multiple, <laughs> a multitude of apps. Uh, I need a little toolbox there. So I would have Soundscape and Blind Square, but I would also use Be My Eyes and Ira. They really help me when I'm out and about. Okay, so we asked a question a couple episodes ago. What is the best doorbell on the market? Smart doorbell, obviously. And we actually have an answer here from one of our, our audience. Dean Orman writes, it has to be the Ring doorbell, plus we've got the Ring Alarm too, super accessible via the app, and there's nothing like asking Lady A to arm your home. Sean, agree or disagree? <laughs> yes, definitely. There's something just futuristic and cool about being able to ask for your home to be armed. I love that. Um, anyway, yes, the Ring Video Doorbell is something that I do own. And as a blind or visually impaired person, it's it's so reassuring to know who's at your door before you open it. So I love it. I will say I do find the Ring app slightly, uh, what's the word? 
let's use kludgy. That's something I've heard recently. Slightly kludgy to use. Uh, yes, it's accessible, but it's not the best user experience, but they are updating that all the time. Um, so yes, the video doorbell is great. For my security cameras though, I use something called the Blink X2s. Totally wireless, battery operated, easy to install, easy to set up, and the app is totally accessible. Uh, I really like the Blink X2s as well, and you can arm and disarm them using the Lady A smart speaker. So yeah, Blink X2s so are great. Mitchell, agree, disagree? Um, I'd have to go, well, my major experience has been with Ring. Um, so I would have to go with the Ring ecosystem. Uh, I have the doorbell. I have two Ring cameras in the backyard. Uh, and I, I think my front doorbell is actually not the traditional Ring doorbell. It is the, uh, the Ring. Yeah, the Ring, it's a Ring the Pro. Ring Pro, right? Um, I've had really good experiences with it. Um, it's not without its flaws, uh, but I really like the way everything talks to each other. The setup is very simple. All the devices communicate with each other very well. They actually communicate using A-L-E-X-A, once again, Lady Lady A. Um, uh, what, what was the term that uh, that you guys used? Was it kludgy for something that was not really that smooth? Yeah, so I'm going to use that all the time now. Kludgy really applies uh, in terms of this uh, Ring ecosystem to the software. Software is definitely a little kludgy. Uh, we could use a little bit on the back end to control everything a little bit better, but in terms of setting everything up, the way it works, access, accessing cameras whenever you want, saying, hey, show me the front yard, show me the backyard, show me my front door, all, and being able to set those things up, incredible. It works really, really well. I would just like to see the software work a little better. Let us tweak things a little bit to set up to the, the control that we would want to do personally. Aside from that, in love with the ecosystem, love the way everything works. Again, my experience is sort of limited to the Ring. I'd like to try other things, but I love my Ring. I know Steven uses Ring as well at his house, but I'm going to have to take my hats off because a year ago I would have said Ring, but the Logitech Circle View doorbell has blown my mind. It's 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 a incredible in terms of the quality it records. It's got a built-in light and motion sensors. It works beautifully with HomeKit and can actually look into your photos library and identify people. So if the doorbell rings, it will say something like, you know, doorbell ringing might be Mitchell, might be Sean, might be Steven. Really, really cool. Plus it, it, it works right into HomeKit. So on your Apple TV, on any of your versions of your Apple TV, you can pull that up and you could see that there as well. But, you know, I'd have to say that Ring, Ring is up there. They've been around, they've been around since day one and they've definitely kept kept every innovation going and they definitely are quick and responsive but I, logitech is good well can, can i no can i just very quickly uh, just mention two things one i'm doing it anyway the rapid ring app is a fantastic app if you find that something's connecting to the doorbells too slow get the rapid ring app instead uh, it will work with the ring account which is fantastic and also you can ask lady a to answer the door for you. So you can actually talk to the person at the front door, either with the Echo devices, with the screen, or even without. We are talking all about your questions throughout the season. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you've got one, it's feedback at ami.ca by email, on Twitter, at Double Tap Canada, with the hashtag Ask Double Tap, and on Instagram, it is at Double Tap Online. We take a quick break and come back to wrap up with some other questions we've got here from you here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV talking all about your questions and more importantly, actually answering them. Alongside me this week is, of course, Stephen Scott, who's here each and every single week, Sean Priest and Mitchell Whitfield. Gentlemen, we only have a couple minutes, so let's ask uh, let's answer a question from Gordon Anthony. He writes, trying to use voice control on iPhone. I hear it swipe in response to verbal commands, but I get no feedback from voiceover on what item is in focus. Anything you can suggest? Hmm. I think that long pause that means that we're not quite sure, Gordon. Um, so voice control and voiceover should work together nicely, actually. Um, lots of people say that voice commands and uh, uh, voiceover aren't sort of compatible. I've heard people ring the Apple Accessibility Help Desk and be told, though you can't use voice uh, voiceover and voice control at the same time, which is utter nonsense. You can totally. There's a voice control command specific for voiceover. Um, now, as for your specific problem, as in that swish sound that you're hearing is the uh, sort of acknowledgement that it heard your voice command and why you're not getting any voice, uh, voiceover feedback from that, 
I'm not entirely sure, I'll be honest with you. Um, with the latest updates to iOS, voice control has improved a lot. Uh, a lot of the bugs have been ironed out there. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, there's no reason why voiceover shouldn't be announcing whatever item you're on after you do a voice control command. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that one. So let's let's say we'll research it and try to figure that out for him while we do that. Okay. Another question comes in, uh, is there a smart tech out there to make cookouts more fun? I'm guessing a cookout means like on a gathering outside, which we haven't done for two years. Um, uh, I would definitely, definitely have to go with the smart thermometer for my barbecue. Um, Weber makes an incredible eye grill. They actually bought the eye grill brand and it has, th you know, four potential prongs. You can plug them into steaks and to chicken and actually set cooking instructions in the app and it'll notify you exactly what to do. It takes, honestly, you don't need to be smart about the barbecue, even if you're really good at it. This makes sure that you'll get a beautiful steak or chicken or anything that you're cooking every single time. Anybody else? That's that, that, that's really a good one. Ian. You know, I think, you know, Sean mentioned earlier, you know, he likes to take a smart speaker everywhere as long as it's cheap. Uh, I think having a good, cheap, smart speaker that you could just knock the heck out of and uh, waterproof, long battery life, that'd be a good thing to have with you. Um, I wonder if there are any smart lighting options that are portable uh, that would work. Those would be great to have with you when you're out camping or on a picnic. Smart light setup that was portable. Have you ever heard of something like that? Or something you could think of offhand? I can't. You know, I can't think of smart lighting. I definitely have to go with you on the right. speaker side of things. Stephen, you've got that, you know, synthetic turf in your backyard. What do you bring out there to make uh, gatherings more exciting? Uh, someone else to cook the food. That's the bottom line for me. Uh, always get someone else to do it, and then <laughs> we all survive. Um, but what I would say is, uh, just you mentioned smart lighting. Uh, if you want garden lighting uh, to be smart, and a lot of people want to do that now, Philips Hue is the company to go to because they have so many products now for the garden. Uh, and I have to say, Philips has probably got to be the easiest setup uh, hardware I've ever had. So if I buy a light uh, and I plug it in, I just ask my lady A to detect devices or discover devices, and, and it's there. It's, it's instantly dragged into the app. I'm able to control it within literally two minutes. Of, of turning it on, which is absolutely brilliant. Not something which is the case for all of these smart products. And one more thing, to Stephen's point, um, if you don't have Hue lighting or can't afford it, because uh, it is a more expensive option, uh, you can actually get a Wemo smart plug, which allows you to plug anything into it and automatically make that device lighting or anything else smart. Uh, it connects with uh, Lady A, as we've been saying. It also is an app that you can use to control it. Uh, another good option. Guys, thank you so much for being by my side uh, throughout the season, obviously. And of course, on this episode, Sean Priest, we will hear you each and every single week on AMI-audio. Double Tap Canada is on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Mitchell Whitfield, you're the co-host of your tech report heard on Sirius XM on Saturdays and Sundays. And of course, Stephen Scott, thank you for being by my side throughout the season. And we keep this thing going. On behalf of everybody here at Double Tap TV, thank you guys for being here. If you want to get involved again, feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. And as you can see, we do get to your questions. And finally, on Instagram, it is at doubletap.online. On behalf of everybody here, have a great summer. We'll speak to you on the next edition of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Jordan Steves. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Flalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Kara Nye. Director, programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.